America's Next Top Model is notoriously problematic, but Tyra Banks isn't the only one to blame. There were several different people who contributed to the toxic environment on this show. One of those people include Mr. J. Manuel. In today's video, we're going to focus on his falling out with Tyra Banks and what he did wrong on the show. So let's get into it. So you guys probably recognize Jay from America's Next Top Model because he is one of the OG hosts. But let's go ahead and talk about some of his problematic moments. Let's start off by talking about this moment with Kayla, who was a model, and pretty much she was not comfortable doing scenes with men, but Jay continued to push her into doing this commercial and kissing a guy. Like, we really kiss them? We want to have a moment, do you know what I mean? That sexual charged tension moment. I wasn't totally thrilled that we'd be joining in a kiss. I instantly was not happy at all. I just can't get this whole kiss thing out of my head. I feel personally uncomfortable with intimacy with men. I just wanted to talk to you. You're cool with this though, right? You're not cool with it. That's exactly like America's Next Top Model. They love to exploit these women on their show because they ask them about their past trauma and then they'll like formulate a whole episode around this. And I'm sure they planned this entire scene with Kayla. Why does it bother you? If you're t saying to me right now, you'll throw away jobs if you've got to kiss a guy and you can't go through the rest of your life with this. You really can't. You have to deal with this. Okay. Looking good on the inside starts with feeling great on the outside. Of course, she's clearly uncomfortable, and he's like, you have to deal with this. Like, go and do this scene with a guy. And she, you'll see, it's not. Hold on. Um, um, I forgot my line. So that's just one quick moment of Mr. J being insensitive on the show. And there are a ton of these moments. We're going to talk about the whole race, like swapping photo shoot, because it wasn't just Tyra creating these ideas or the producers. Mr. J has his hand in it as well, whether he wants to say so or not, because he was a part of those scenes and he was the face of it. He was as important as Tyra because sometimes there would be scenes and moments and photo shoots and everything without Tyra and Jay is the person who was running the show. So if something messed up was going on under his watch, he is responsible. But I want to talk to you guys about this book and Jay's departure from the show because he wrote this book that's inspired by America's Next Top Model, but it's not full truth. In this clip, Jay is going to talk about his departure from the show and what contributed to that because Tyra wasn't the greatest friend. Well, it was, you know, I think there's there are many things that contributed um, and she became very, you know, uh, she basically just said, I'm disappointed. And that was it and kind of cut me off. And even outside of the show, we would almost talk every day and it was very weird. And, and it was intimated that I wouldn't work for the studio again. So again, you know, the, these kind of threats in this fear-based culture built. And I went back under pressure. She later admitted <clears throat> she behaved. At one point, he wanted to leave the show, but the studio started pressuring him into saying like, you know what? You're going to be like blacklisted from the studio. We're going to make sure you're not working in Hollywood if you don't come and do this show. But he claims that Tyra did apologize. She behaved inappropriately, but and she did apologize to me. So I want to preface it with that. But And Tyra has apologized for a few different things, but her apologies have been weak. And if you guys have not seen my past videos on Tyra Banks, definitely go and check those out. But I want to talk a little bit about this book that Jay wrote. So the book is titled The Wig, The Bitch, and The Meltdown. Sorry, the B word threw me off. I feel like, okay, anyways. Who's the B word? Is he going Tyra the B word? Because it's obviously like supposed to be Tyra, I'm assuming in the background, who's modeling. I mean, I'm not entirely sure, but we could only assume. And there's Jay. And um, there's also a quote, the devil also wears cheap shoes. 
This is supposedly a fiction piece. So this isn't real life. That's why I said earlier, like, it's not like the truth. I don't, it's just like, it's kind of weird to me because I don't know why he's making this book that's like about America's Next Top Model, but it's also not about it. Like, hmm, like, what is that supposed to mean? The book is a work of fiction. Everyone has the right to, to tell their own story. And uh, I, I, I can now. That's really yeah. what it is. It still rubs me the wrong way that this is a fiction book, but there may be a strategy behind that. I think that he is saying that this is a fiction book because he ultimately doesn't want to be sued. And I don't know if he can even really speak about how bad it was on the show. But again, I feel like he contributed to this environment. And this book being fiction is just his way to go and, you know, rewrite history, but avoid getting sued for it. When Jay is asked about his relationship with Tyra he does everything in his power to avoid it and he talks about the contracts and the fact that he was planning on leaving after cycle 18 and no plan to come back for cycle 19 even though he did keep coming back and giving into this system it seemed like they would pretty much blackmail him if he left the show and honestly he seemed happy doing the show so I feel like he's trying to make it seem like he really wanted to leave but like he probably was super comfortable doing it but after he tried to leave, this rubbed Tyra the wrong way. And this really caused a rift in their relationship. And she started treating him differently. I walked onto set to shoot casting. It was just Miss J, her and me. And she wouldn't talk to me unless the cameras were rolling. And you try and tape a whole cycle that way. And it was extremely difficult. She did apologize. But then there were other things, a lot of things that contributed to kind of the shift and there was a shift in culture behind the scenes and it was not a, a great work environment. So he claims it was not a good work environment and then he goes on to talk about his treatment. So, you know, when your colleagues treat you that way and then you can't say anything legally and then there's this leak and you can't talk about that it's leaked and that you actually left the show, it, it really puts you in a very, it, it's really sad. It, it's hard when you're treated that way. And so people who have, you know, concerns with me saying, well, why are you talking about it now? And this and that. I'm not talking about, I am talking about it in interviews, but again, my book is a work of fiction. He's really pushing that narrative because he does not want to be sued for this book, but he hasn't really talked to Tyra or hung out with Tyra. He claims that the last time he saw her was at BeautyCon in 2017. That is so long ago. He was quoted saying, to be very honest, we have no relationship to speak of, which is really sad. So yeah, doesn't look like they have a great relationship and I'm sure there are reasons why. I don't know if he wants to really go and share all of those because he doesn't want to get sued, but I also think that he did some things wrong and there's a reason why he's not speaking about, you know, his part as well. He doesn't want to get canceled. But now we need to talk about this moment where they had the models swap races for a photo shoot because Jay was pretty much the creative director of this photo shoot. I mean, he was the face of it, even though he claims that he wasn't. He was all over that episode. He claims he was very uncomfortable during this photo shoot. And even though he was the creative director, it was not his idea. He said, I was basically told that I had to execute the creative and it made me very uncomfortable. Race swapping shoot, you know, I was very uncomfortable. My, my parents grew up in South Africa. They're from South Africa um, um, under apartheid. So you've got to understand the kind of the family I grew up in. I'm biracial. It's just, it's, it just was very uncomfortable. If he was so uncomfortable, you would think that he would do something to stop it. But he claims he was guided by his producers, Tyra and Ken, and you have to trust your producers. So even though he felt uncomfy, he just went along with it. There's good reason that this scene haunts Jay because he was a part of this and it was really wrong. I mean, there are so many people who have been upset from this episode. Sicilian woman. And Noelle, we're making you into a traditionally African woman with a head wrap and everything. It is definitely an exciting experience. 
So Tyra has actually apologized for these clips before. Even though her apology was pretty weak, she's had to apologize. But Jay is trying to play defense and rewrite history. And this is what he has to say. Like, this is what he claims went down. And honestly, do we know the truth? I don't know. But he went through with it, which is just bad enough. So I did go to my co-executive producer at the time because it was kind of understood. Like, I, I knew certain things at that point I couldn't even go to Tyra with. And they basically said I had to do that shoot. And I said, well, I'm gonna look like this is my idea. And they said, don't worry, we'll cover you in the edit. You won't look bad. And you know, still to this day, I get people who say, you were the creative director, this was your creative. And you know, you know, everyone online, they all have their opinion yeah. and you yeah. just let them have their opinion, but they don't really know what's going on. We don't really know what's going on because a lot of the answers that Jay gives are half-assed and it doesn't really explain why he was a part of such a toxic show and allowed these type of moments to go on air. There are a lot of receipts online about Jay and he's actually gone on to Instagram Live a lot. Like he goes on and talks to past contestants and past judges and actually he talked to Miss Jay on Live. If you guys remember, Miss Jay was a fellow judge and some people in the comments weren't happy this person wrote they're trying to save themselves and just pile all the blame onto tyra but they were very problematic too whether they wanted to be or not okay but not them pretending they did not also play a huge part and how problematic it was like y'all do you remember the comments you made i like this comment this is revisionist history with no ownership for their parts and contributing to the problematic situations is sickening okay it's a mouthful furthermore discussing someone's mental health evaluations is a violation of hipaa so in this instance they were talking about some models and their mental health and things like that which i guess is against the rules i'm not entirely sure here's another comment Oh, so now the truth is out and they are suddenly blaming it all on Tyra. They could have always said that it was toxic and walk away, but they didn't. They participated completely in this show. So Jay can act like he's innocent, but he's guilty as well. And he made rude comments. He contributed to inappropriate moments. He violated vulnerable models and he exploited these girls for entertainment just like Tyra did. And the the whole show, America's Next Top Model, is just like, there are so many little, little like dark elements. Like when I was researching last night, I found out that one of the past judges literally got arrested for inappropriately touching a model. And we, we need to talk about it. This guy's name is Noel Marin, and he is an owner and director of a model management agency in New York City. It actually closed in 2016 after declaring bankruptcy due to his booking agent and several of his models accusations of wage theft. So this guy is a total mess. He does have an Instagram. When I was looking up, I found his Instagram. I was like, oh, okay, he's got an Instagram. Um, so he's not in jail or anything, but he violated a model and a lot of these articles about this situation have been removed from the internet, which is a sign to me that he has tried to cover his tracks, trying to act like this did not actually go down. But I did find an article that claimed that he was being sued by someone named Nicholas, who was an aspiring model. He claims that he met him and he went to his, I guess, apartment or his studio to do a photo shoot. No, they went to his apartment apartment in October of 2007 and pretty much this creepazoid grabbed him and touched him in his area because he was modeling underwear and um, touched him without his consent. This actually happened twice because at one point, I guess this judge man, Noel, was able to convince this model, Nicholas, to come back to his place because he wanted to do an Armani campaign claiming that he would be casted in this $120,000 Armani campaign if he came over and, you know, modeled his underwear and there were no Armani reps at his apartment and pretty much this guy 
touched him again, which is just so gross because it's an example of someone using their position of power to violate someone who's in a vulnerable situation and get what they want from them. So what do you guys think about this situation? Do you want me to make more America's Next Top Model related videos? Send me an email if you have any receipts or anything you want me to react to or talk about. But what do you think about Jay? I feel like he's trying to wash his hands of everything and he's definitely guilty. And also that Noel guy we just talked about, like, excuse me, like, do they not do like background checks on people when they like i don't know when they hire him he's obviously a creep his place is bankrupt like he's not someone to have on the show judging models but i want to go ahead and open this letter from bailey it looks like they are from the north east but make sure you guys email me if you do have any video ideas or anything you want me to talk about i have been on a roll today and let's see what this is oh my gosh so cute is it a bracelet okay Sloan, I love your videos. Thank you for making them and bringing awareness to these issues. Here are two bracelets from my little Etsy store to bring in the good luck vibe. Oh my gosh. I'll list their sh their store below. It looks like it's an Etsy shop called Lucky Marcho, and it's a red like braided bracelet, which is so cute. Wearing a red string bracelet is said to provide protection, good luck, and fortune, and help the wearer reach their destiny. Oh, that is so sweet. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I love this. I really appreciate it. I love these type of things too. Because like, can you imagine if I like met a cute boy and like gave like him one and I had one and we just like both wear it. Like, oh my God, stop. <sighs> Thank you so much. And I'll see you guys in a new video soon. Bye guys.